Hey everybody, it's Scott again, and happy Wednesday. Hope everyone is having a excellent Wednesday with the Lord. Let's kick a prayer. Father, our God, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, Holy Spirit, our protector and companion. Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer today to confess our sins and beg for your mercy and forgiveness. But then also, Lord, we come to you in prayer to thank you for the multitude of blessings and gifts that you will give us today. And Father, we also come to you in prayer and just pray that you guide us and keep us on the narrow path so we can work towards getting through the narrow gate as these end times approach us. And please, Father, fill us with your Holy Spirit and educate us in the Word and in your prophecies and also in the teachings of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we confess and ask all of these things in our Savior's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. So anyway, continuing on with our end of times uh, prophecy studies, uh, today I'm going to be reading um, Zechariah chapter 14. So let's get started. The Lord will rule the earth. Watch for the day of the Lord is coming uh, when your possessions will be plundered right in front of you. On that day I will gather all the nations to fight against Jerusalem. The city will be taken, the house is plundered, and the women raped. Half of the population will be taken away into captivity, and half will be left among the ruins of the city. Then the Lord will go out to fight against those nations, as he has fought in times past. On that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives will split apart, making a wide valley running from east to west, for half the mount will move toward the north and half towards the south. You will flee through this valley, for it will reach across Azal. Yes, you will flee as you did from the earthquake in the days of King Uzziah of Judah. Then the Lord my God will come, and all his holy ones with him. On that day the sources of light will no longer shine. Yet there will be a continuous day. Only the Lord knows how this could happen. There will be no normal day and night, for at evening time it will still be light. On that day, life-giving waters will flow from out from Jerusalem, half toward the Dead Sea and half toward the Mediterranean, flowing continuously both in summer and winter. And the Lord will be king over all the earth. On that day there will be one Lord. His name alone will be worshipped. All the land from Geba, north of Judah, to Ramon, south of Jerusalem, uh, will become one vast plain. But Jerusalem will be raised up in its original place and will be inhabited all the way from Benjamin Gate over to the site of the Old Gate, then to the corner gate and from the Tower of Hanal to the king's wine presses. And Jerusalem will be filled, safe at last, never again to be cursed and destroyed. And the Lord will send a plague on all nations that fought against Jerusalem. Their people will become like walking corpses, their flesh rotting away. Their eyes will shrivel in their sockets, and their tongues will decay in their mouths. On that day they will be terrified and stricken by the Lord with great panic. They will fight against each other, hand-to-hand -hand combat. Judah, too, will be fighting at Jerusalem. The wealth of all the neighboring nations will be captured. Great quantities of gold and silver and fine clothing. This same plague will strike the horses, mules, camels, donkeys, and all other animals in the enemy camps. In the end, the enemies of Jerusalem who survived the plague will go up to, to Jerusalem each year to worship the King, the Lord Almighty, and to celebrate the Festival of Shelters. And any nation anywhere in the world that refuses to come to Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord Almighty, will have no rain. And if the people of Egypt refuse to attend the festival, the Lord will punish them with the same plague that he sends on the other nations who refuse to go. Egypt and the other nations will be punished if they don't go to celebrate the festival. On that day, even the harness bells of the horses will be inscribed with these words, set apart as holy to the Lord, and the cooking pots in the temple of the Lord 
would be sacred as the basins used beside the altar. In fact, every cooking pot in Jerusalem and Judah would be set apart as holy to the Lord Almighty. All who come to worship would be free to use any of these pots to boil their sacrifices. And on that day there will no longer be traitors in the temple of the Lord Almighty. And those are some promising words. And what I get from that is all of us that continue to seek the Lord and beg for the Holy Spirit to be in our hearts and in our minds and in our evil tongues, uh, we'll always be able to count on the Lord for shelter and protection. And all the nations and the multitude of people, <clears throat> as the end times approach, that just dig in, harden their hearts, and refuse the Lord. Um, the scriptures say it over and over again. Those nations and those people will be destroyed. Eternal damnation. And I felt extremely compelled to talk this morning. I was uh, listening to uh, David, uh, Pastor David uh, Wilkerson uh, this morning. I've listened to one of his YouTube podcasts, Knowing the Holy Spirit. I've listened to it about five times now. And each time I hear something uh, new and important and it touches me and it just makes me crave the word of our Heavenly Father that much more. It just makes me crave to know God's prophecy and know uh, that Jesus is, in fact, coming back very soon with God's kingdom and God's judgment. And I believe that unconditionally. And I know a lot of you other devout Christians out there um, believe that as well. And it is just critical, critical, critical that on a daily basis we make sure that we go to our Father in prayer, confess all of our sins, and beg for his mercy. And as important, beg for his guidance and direction in our daily lives in conjunction with our scripture study and our prayer time. And I've been saying this in several videos. Make it a point and set a goal to spend ample time with our Heavenly Father on a daily basis. You know, seriously, less TV time, less Facebook time, less, you know, a little less play time, you know, a little less participation in the things of this world that will pull us away and distract us from Heavenly Father, our Lord Jesus, and His glorious Holy Spirit. And it takes a little discipline at first. I was talking with Daryl last night, and it's down to the point now that uh, during the daytime, in my travels in my car, when I'm at work, here at the house, uh, I listen to these online ministries. You know, I listen to Hummingbird 027. I listen to uh, Brother Carlos. I listen to uh, Pastor uh, David Lorkison because my spirit is craving, craving the ministry, craving the Word of God, craving to be educated, you know, because the end times are getting very, very, very close. And the more that I research and study and follow these trusted ministries and these Christian news sites, you know, Things are about to hit the fan. You know, a lot of ministers, uh, cr devout Christian ministers out there, firmly believe that the, the period of 2014 to 2016, we're going to see a lot of prophecies start to unravel and be fulfilled with calamity, desperation, and just the greed and the corruption. You know, the whole worldwide Satan system that we live under, it's on the verge of completely imploding in on itself. And the thing of it is, you've got the big banks and all the governments, world governments, and 300 Club, Illuminati, whatever groups um, out there feeding the system false reports. Oh yeah, everything's okay. You know, unemployment is, you know, uh, real low, and there's jobs all over the world, and the housing market's just, just booming. And when you follow reports like on x22report.com, either on their website or David's YouTube channel, that's not the case. The whole world, the financial system, we're all broke. 
Unemployment rate in this country is averaging anywhere from 30 to 37 percent. Those are the true numbers. Hell, our government's broke. All the big banks are broke. You know, listening to X22 report yesterday, JP Morgan and a lot of big retail chains, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people being laid off because the more people that are being laid off and the less money that's filtering down to us middle class people, whatever little bit of money we can scrounge together, we use for rent, a little bit of gas money, a little bit of groceries, and that's it. There's nothing left over to go out to Walmart to buy stereos and a new car. And people, we're not in good shape. And that's why um, I'm emphasizing, really emphasizing that this is a golden time for all of us to get close to the Lord, to pray to the Lord for guidance and direction in the scriptures, and for him to educate us and to be mindful and watchful of everything that's going on in this world today that's leading up to the rapture and the great tribulation. And I'm starting to really, really focus my studies and my prayer life and my devotion and my loyalty to Father God, Lord Jesus, and Holy Spirit, um, I want to get raptured. I don't want to be stuck here for the tribulation. You know, I've been doing an in-depth study in the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation, and it's not going to be pretty. It's just, wow, yeah, it's scary. You read through the book of Revelation and get into a study guide that I've told you guys about, and it's in the link in the description box below, truthnet.org. Is an in-depth study guide on, on the revelations of Daniel and also uh, the book of Revelation. And it's going to be ugly. It really is. I don't want to be here for that. So today, on a daily basis, what I do is I go to the Lord and I say, God, look, I'm a sinful person. Even today, you know, I admit on this broadcast, I'm struggling with some internal stuff and I'm feeling a little lustful and and, and and feeling a little greedy, which are kind of sinful. And I've already gone to the Lord and said, Lord, I'm struggling with some, some sin today. Please come cleanse me. Please wash me with the blood of the Lamb so I can be better focused to serve you and carry your message. And so, you know, it's going to be kind of a short broadcast. I just felt the need to come out and just share today, carry God's message. And... For the addict and alcoholic that comes across, you know, this as well, I'm also here to carry uh, the message of God, hope, and sobriety. Because, you know, if you're struggling with addiction, whether it's food, uh, drugs, alcohol, porn, whatever your addiction is, you can find help through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, through Heavenly Father's glorious powerful holy spirit and you can find help and mercy and guidance with father god jehovah our one and only true god that we worship you know it's not hopeless because the other honest thing was i got out of bed this morning did my normal morning prayers shortly thereafter man i just my spirit's been bugging me all all day you know i'm kind of feeling depressed and feeling scared and feeling anxious and feeling a lot of anxiety you know, just life pressures like everyone else is going through to the point of just extreme agitation. So what do I do? I take it to the Lord in prayer. Father, this is what's going on with me. I need some help. Do And then also following Brother Carlos and his ministry. Do what I need to to cast Satan and his demon followers out of my house. Cast them out of just out of my life, out of my finances, out of my material possessions. And to really let Satan and his demonic follower spirits know that I belong to Father God Jehovah. I belong to Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. I belong to uh, the glorious Holy Spirit. And I, and I would firmly suggest, and there are several links in my description box, follow the X-22 report and also Hummingbird 027 for honest Christian news, news of truly what's going on in this world today. And then for spiritual, deep spiritual cleansing of your home and your life in general, Brother Carlos here on YouTube 
is a very powerful ministry to have in your house. You know, uh, there's a huge difference in my house with his ministry going in the background virtually around the clock. And then also, you know, uh, Pastor David Lorkinson, he is a phenomenal, phenomenal ministry to follow and, and just tons of stuff that we can follow in his guidance and direction. And so that's going to be it. Just refer to all my, my links and info um, in the description box. And I just want to say God bless to everyone. I love all of you. I pray that you're having a really good day today. Get home safe. And please make time to study and worship the Lord. And we'll catch up with you guys later. Ciao.